All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a toilet paper holder and then repair the wall properly afterwards. So the first thing you're going to want to do is score the perimeter of it. And these things are usually held in by a big honking chunk of glue or caulking or whatever adhesive the builder used at the time. So your goal is to just cut around it, cut it, cut it out uh, along the perimeter and rip her out and we'll go from there. All right, so as I was cutting around the perimeter there, it just happened to fall right out, which is very convenient. So yeah, I just hacked away around the perimeter of it for, you know, maybe a minute or two and then it fell out. So let me just get set up here and I'll show you how to properly patch this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need the dry, I'm gonna put a piece of drywall here, but the drywall needs something to grab onto because there are no studs here, obviously. So I'm gonna have to fix in a piece of wood. Okay, stir stick will suffice. And I'm gonna screw in about probably three or four, probably three. Um, but yeah, this is all the extra, we'll have some more, but I carry some extra wood in my toolbox and in my crew kit, okay? So you always want to keep extra wood on hand in your truck, in your toolbox, in your crew kit, because you never know when you're going to be at a, you're going to have an inclined plane where you got to level out the ladder, so you need someone to put under the ladder foot. You never know when you're going to have to fill big holes like this. Um, and of course, the stir stick is meant for stirring paint. So you can see in the summertime, I'm stirring deck stain with this, right? So anyways, always keep spare wood on you, pro tip. And let's, let me screw these in and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I got my drill here ready to go with a drywall screw and I got this ready to go here. I can't film this and do it at the same time because my trusty cameraman is elsewhere working in the house. So I'm just going to film the step by step and you'll see it after it's done. Okay, there's really not much to it. Okay, so I got my backing in there. So I screwed these all in. You want to do your best to get the screw like into the wall as much as you can. You don't want it protruding out too much. I think I did a pretty good job. This one I done goofed. The drywall here was pretty weak. So I actually had to drill another one in a little bit lower. So I'm gonna have to do a pretty good job with skimming the tape around. But let me get to that step. First, I'm gonna cut a piece of drywall and shimmy it in there. All right, before I put the drywall in actually, I wanted to just quickly cut a better square around. Okay, so now when I fit the piece of drywall in, it should fit a lot better. And then I'm going to screw in the drywall piece accordingly to these. Hopefully they hold up. This one for sure will hold up. This, these two, uh, well, we'll see. Alright, so I got the drywall cut. It's not perfect, but I mean, you know, what is in the trades? <laughs> so you want to make sure that it is flush as possible with the wall. In fact, you'd be better, even if it's just a little bit depressed or con concaved, because um, then you can build up the layers of mud if need be. You don't want it protruding out too far. If you have it protruding out too far, that's going to present challenges because you're going to have to uh, skim it out really, really far to make it as level as possible. So right now it's pretty much level with the with the existing wall. So I'm gonna screw this in and then I'm gonna tape it. All right, so I done goofed. So this piece of wood was thick enough and the drywall bond, it took to it really well. The stir sticks are far too thin. So I actually stacked three stir sticks on top of each other here. Okay. Um, they're, they're, they're in there now, they're solid. Okay, so let's try this again. All right, so I'm going to skim this now and it came out okay. So highly recommend using thicker wood. 
that's not screw sticks, or sorry, stir sticks, because you can see here, this was the piece of wood that, uh, the spare piece that I had that was thicker, and it was really nice. The, the screws went into the drywall nice there. Here, they're protruding a bit. That's with three stir sticks in behind. Okay, so I can finesse it on the skim coat, but, uh, you know, it's better to just have things work out nicely for you instead of always having to finesse things, right? So let me skim this and I'll show you what it looks like after first skim. All right, so I just skimmed this first coat. So I'm gonna throw a fan on that, let it dry out. I'll sand it and then I will probably do a finishing coat after that. So what you're seeing here is because there's quite a large gap between the um, tape and the, whatchamacallit, uh, what do you call it? Between the drywall piece and the existing drywall. So because there's just open space, that's just air trying to escape, right? So uh, once I sand it, once it dries, it'll be rock hard. All right, so this is completely dry after the first coat, pretty good. I'm just gonna sand it and I'll show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna skim it second coat. Okay, so I'm sanding up against the door frame here and sometimes the sander head doesn't give you the best sand so you gotta whip out the old little paper and just finesse it all the way down, right? But the one thing I wanna point out also is you do a good job skimming. Look how nicely that's sanded. It is nice and smooth. Right? It is just nicely flush with the wall. And that's just first coat. We try to do second coat where the whole thing is completely smoothed out. Alright, so that's what it should look like after you sand it after first coat. Right? It is pretty well its own, not gonna lie. Okay, so now I'm gonna skim it. And I'm gonna skim it the exact same way I did the first time around, and it'll come out perfectly flat after I'm done sanding it. Alright, see how far I sand it out? I sand it even further than the first time around. So when that dries 100%, it should come out perfectly flat. I am excited for you to see the next reel of this video. All right, so this came out beautifully. I'm about to sand it, and I will show you what it looks like when I sand it. And the importance of skewing right into the wall, like, that's going to sand so perfectly. I look, I already started sanding, I just started sanding here. It's not completely done yet, but you can already tell it's going to turn out well. Now that is a skim coat, buddy. What? Oh man. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Holy, I don't feel any ridges or lumps or nothing. Alright, one little air bubble here. I'll fix that after. I'm going to spot prime this and then I can see anything that's got to get fixed. And then I'll fix it. It's easier to fix stuff when it's primed because when you Try and fix stuff when it's just the compound. You're gonna sand off uh, more surface than you want to, right? Whereas when it's primed, um, and you have to fix a couple things here and there, you won't be sanding off any compound. This came out beautifully. So now that it's primed, you can see a couple little divots here and there. You know, a couple little holes, but it's nothing that quick. So you can see that I've just done a bunch of little tiny putty spots here all over. These were just all air bubbles, divots, whatever, whatever. And you might be thinking, no one's going to see it when it's that low to the ground. But that's true, except for the fact that there's going to be a toilet here. For the client is going to sit and observe the beautiful work that we did, only to see that there's still a bunch of work to do. So you got to keep the little things in mind, right? For example, this little divot that I just noticed by the light switch, which the light switch cover is not going to cover. So little things like that, people notice. All right, so we are all done in this bathroom for now. The contractors are gonna put in their vanity and the baseboards. I'm gonna paint the baseboards when they're in. But yeah, we did the ceiling, the walls, and the trim and door. So yeah, this spot turned out great. 
and this is what it should look like when it's painted. Can't even tell it was there, right? The vanity's going there. That was the contractors doing work there, but yeah, we finessed the crap out of that. Can't even tell there was work done there. And we fixed the toilet paper holder here too. So that's how you do skim. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you learned something new and gained value from that. Feel free to check us out on social media at Altona Painting on Facebook and Instagram to see some of our most recently completed projects. Also, check out our website altonapainting.com to see our full portfolio and learn more about us. If you're in the greater Toronto area and you're looking for a painter who values quality and professionalism, hit us up. Or if you know someone who is looking for a painter, pass our name along. Lastly, thank you so much for watching and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more instructional painting videos.